Hey, welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, hello, take that hello. midweek break, talk about some of the fun things that we found going on in the world of Linux, open source, and, well, anything we find interesting. I'm Vin. That slightly yellow-themed, <laughs> uh, probably need a little balancing, but it's Jill. Look at her. She's nice and bright and crisp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I got a new um, Sony A6400 camera, and I'm loving it. It's beautiful. <laughs> It's nice to be uh, 60 frames per second. <laughs> and that and that not so crisp, yet ever, ever lovable. Oh, he's crisp. Debatable. <laughs> Pedro, you, you, it's hurting me to even say this, so cut me some slack. Um, <laughs> why would you hurt yourself? <laughs> to build up tolerance. I gotta do a show oh, with you okay. on set. Yeah, Shoot can, yourself with smaller yeah, bullets, exactly, right? Okay. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, that is Pedro Mateus. I'm Vince Stone. We're doing all this fun stuff. We got a lot to run through this week. But Jill, you're back with us, back from the dead. You survived um yeah. you had the black lung. Yeah. Yeah. I was real I couldn't even talk for about three or four days without it being very, very painful and I kind of thought I was going to get struck throat, but I didn't. I thought you were about to say struck by lightning. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that and lots of fevers. <laughs> Put you back in one piece. About 100%. What are you yeah. about? 95%? 96? Yeah, about 90%. I'm still having fevers occasionally. <laughs> oh, no. Pedro, have, have you had anything to give you the fever lately? <laughs> <laughs> Night fever, night fever. <laughs> no, uh, no, no, no fever. <laughs> but uh, I did get uh, my hands on a broken apugi duet. Isn't nice? That, that thing's stout, isn't it? It is. It, it's surprisingly larger. It's like a full <laughs> four of the apugi one, which is uh, it's very nice. Uh, but yeah, I've already taken it apart, and I wasn't the first one in there. Because the uh, the screws on the back were a bit chewed, mm. not Ooh. you know stripped, but a little chewed on the inside, and uh, yeah, that that was a pretty dead giveaway. That and the fact that there's <laughs> a uh, zip tie yep. around the firewire port yep. on the inside. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but why? <laughs> <laughs> You know, Pedro was posting um, pics earlier in our Discord uh, this morning, and I, you know, it's PCV shot. And I'm like, oh, okay, let me see. Zoom and enhance. First thing I saw, I was like, that's probably not factory. I don't remember mine having a zip tie around the. Um... So mm -hmm. you... I left it in there. It's not hurting anything. I'm pretty sure the person who put it there was because the um, firewire port was a bit loose and the thing that they had plugged in kept getting disconnected so they tightened it around the inside so it was a bit snug maybe <laughs> possibly possibly my first thought with that I, you know, i'm not a pcb whisperer and I, I try to avoid anything surface mount like that i've cracked mine open and went oh man i hope i never have to do anything with that and closed it right back <laughs> up is what what doesn't work is my first question yeah, I still have to figure that out because uh, I have the uh, wrong FireWire port, which is not in this PC, and I wasn't going to try it today because we were doing the show. Mm. So I'll try it after the show mm. to actually see what's actually wrong with we, it. We could have had fun, man. You could have like plugged it in live on the same PC and see if we got some sparks. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Typically, I will... The most common thing that happens when I see a loose firewire port and I see, zip ties and get it away from me is people will somehow, <laughs> we're talking about a firewire 400 port, manage to plug it in backwards. I know. Uh. <laughs> it doesn't look that chewy. That's a little difficult. <laughs> this is, this is, it is keyed. Yes. <laughs> frighteningly yeah. uh, common occurrence. And what happens when you do that is it usually will smoke the firewire controller, which is a common uh. part that is replaceable. But I mean, if, if you're determined, I, I, we might be having to power that sucker up and see what kind of voltage we're getting out of. And you might have to swap out that chip. It is a thing that I could, in theory, do. I'd rather not, but uh -huh. I can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
uh, just uh, putting this <laughs> one in, like the the big chip in the middle there. Uh-huh. Uh, it was, uh, yeah. So <laughs> I'd rather not. <laughs> no, that was your body breathing in. It misses the fumes. <laughs> I do like the smell of solder. I do. <laughs> do I very much do. And that that is the lowest altitude on his Mount Everest of problems. So <laughs> don't get too wound up about that. Um, I, it's been a year of patience for me in multiple ways. Uh, something that last year I picked up because it was a um, guitar setters used uh, for like 120 bucks, something like that. It was a little red hipster preamp from golden age there, pre 73 junior. I'm like, Oh, that that's neat. And I plugged it in, used it I'm like, okay, I, I kind of dig the sound of that. I'm down with it. And, uh, I went to get a rack to put it in my rack back here. Those things were gone. That, that, that's when we went full COVID and everything, <laughs> everything was gone. <laughs> And I, I even emailed the owner of Golden Age, Bo, which I've talked to a few times now. I'm like, hey, man, what's going on? He like gave me a big list. He was like, man, all right, check this out. We're not going to be shipments in a couple of months. And he wrote me back, like himself again. I'm like, hey, yeah, bye. here's an update. It still can be a minute. And they finally came in stock. So I was very happy that I got a nice little red rack. <laughs> put my little red preamp in. I'm like, ah, oh, it's so very delightfully red. And since I ordered it from Aww. Sweetwater, they sent a bag of what can only be described as uh, foreign <laughs> objects. So, <laughs> Sweet candies for Frank uh, and his pumpkin. <laughs> the silica gel looks a bit weird nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's her candy. I don't... It's a thing. <laughs> ben doesn't eat candy. It's foreign to There you him. go. Frank can have the candy. <laughs> that is the safest... <laughs> air quote food item in this house <laughs> if it's between that and knowing on myself i'm gonna find out um, but i'm very very glad to get that but speaking of like things that took a year to get done the review for the black magic deck link quad which is a four port 4k 60 capture card that i've had for a year it just took black magic a year to respond to my tech support question that is currently up for patrons. If you want to go check that out, I saw Sandy just dropped a comment on it, which, uh, right on. That's going to be up. Uh, I think for everyone else, probably this Friday, but if you want an early crack at that, go take a peek. It is there for your consumption. Now, Linux has a birthday. Yeah, this is so exciting. So 30 years ago today on August 25th, 1991, Linux was born. Yay! Hey. So, <laughs> so it was on that date um, that 21-year-old Finnish student Linus Benedict Torvalds made his now famous announcement on the comp.os.minix news group. And he stated, Hello, everybody out there using Minix. I'm doing a free operating system, just a hobby, won't be big and professional like GNU for 386 AT clones. Wow. And look where Linux is now. It it runs the world, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> it's on it, all it the things. 30 <laughs> years and it became the dominating operating system for everything except the desktop. Mm-hmm. We, we, we are the hipsters. <laughs> We're the, yes. Us people <laughs> using uh, Linux on the desktop, we are the hipsters. You so, think about it, yeah. man. This article does start off very correctly by bringing up the GPL because that's mm-hmm. been the instrumental part of Linux being able to go forward and do what it's capable of doing. Now, Linux has been in big business for the better part of two decades when you think about it. I remember back in the 90s, remember the IBM Linux commercials going, ooh, that's kind of neat. But <laughs> it's been fun, nay, entertaining, interesting watching the different things people have been doing with Linux for the past 30 years. And mm-hmm. let's be honest, it dominates the supercomputer world. 100% market share in that. Nobody's running their uh, yep. <laughs> NT or whatever the server version of Microsoft is these days. But here's a fun fact. It's even used more than Microsoft Windows and Microsoft's own Azure Cloud. Yes. 
Yeah. To exactly. the surprise of absolutely no one. Still a fun fact I like to throw out there. Now, on the desktop, as Pedro kind of alluded to, not so much. I mean, we're the misfits. We're the renegades. You know, we are that plus minus 3%. Absurds. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, that's us old school my brothers and sisters that are out there using the desktop running linux everything in the studio by the way audio does work on linux if, if you're curious uh lies <laughs> filth and lies <laughs> here's the thing you know gaming gaming's been sorted it has uh, for the most yes, part it has. It, it's gotten <laughs> valve is valve has done an tremendous good with that play button with proton of getting it hey once you get your basic thing set up and if you're in a distro like Pop! OS or something like that, your drivers are, for the most part, going to work out of the box. Boom, you're good to go. But we still need to dumb down the audio bits so Windows desktop <laughs> experts can figure out how to use them. Pipewire, I do believe, is going to be doing a fantastic <laughs> job at that, but I do fear we may have to go dumber. However. <laughs> <laughs> it needs a GUI, okay? That, that's it. It needs a GUI. Yeah. <laughs> I... I uh, Here's a serious question. The big common complaint I'm seeing probably for the last couple of weeks, um, I know it's been an ongoing thing, people saying that they're unable to share their desktop audio with Discord streaming. If somebody could explain to me exactly what problem they're having, I can probably work out a fix for it. Relatively Mm -hmm. simple. So feel free to send in a message for that. But yeah, happy birthday, Tux. Linux is the thing. And remember, I pronounce Linus Linux. (laughs) <laughs> Linux. Uh, is <laughs> Linux Thorvalds if you want to go for the Finnish pronunciation? I didn't. Or Linus. No, I, I, I was using the better one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Pedro, you're going to attempt to explain to me what Maui 2 is. Maui 2 <laughs> is the new stable version of the Maui framework. The Maui framework, uh, anticipating your other question there, uh, is a basically Incorrect, the front Pedro end. Mateus. I was going to say, if this okay. crashes, do I get to say Owie Maui? <laughs> <laughs> you can. <laughs> In fact, I'm pretty sure you're encouraged to. Uh, but <laughs> the uh, No, it is the front end uh, framework that uh, Nixos uses, or Nitrix OS. Uh, it is at the the, the, the point seems to be as a front end uh, framework uh, that you have one code base for your application and it will run on a desktop with a big screen or on a mobile, like a tablet or a phone where screen real estate has to be a bit more condensed and you need to make things bigger so that people can see it at a distance. So yeah, it, it switches between the two and you can have the one code base for everything, you just make your app instead of using instead of targeting GTK or targeting QT, you target Maui, which is you know fair enough. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, it is it seems to be a very good idea. And on top of the um, because having the framework is all very well and good, but you need some apps to show for it, Can and they have quite a few. What what like level of Tartarus you'd be stuck in to be editing a QML file on your mobile? <laughs> uh, you're a front end web developer who's gone on vacation and got a, an important call from work to say stuff's broken yo <laughs> I mean I, yeah there you go I run LS on Android out of Curio I'm like oh what's in there but outside of that alright <laughs> yeah but yeah no there's a, an entire um, set of applications like music player Vav I'm sure they went for the uh, clever pronunciation of Wave but I refuse that spells Vav uh, there's also <laughs> Pix, Nota, Buho, um, Station, Communicator, Shelf, mm-hmm. and Clip. Oh, and Booth uh, for your camera app. And a web browser called Soul. Mm-hmm. Because, I don't know, it's nighttime here, so a little bit of sunshine wouldn't go amiss. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was in- introduced to the Maui apps uh, via the Debian-based Nitrix that... Um, mm-hmm. Pedro just mentioned, and um, they're beautiful NX desktop overlay on KDE Plasma, and they have a lot of the Maui apps installed. And one of my favorites is I really like the Maui Index File Manager, and it's convergent. You know, it works back and forth from Android to Linux and back. And it's I just I've 
really enjoyed this file manager because it's really easy to bookmark folders and you can select multiple files from different locations and then copy those into a folder or move them out of a folder. And it's got really nice previews and I like the way it shows um, the info of all the different file formats. So it's a really nice uh, file manager if you've never used it before, I recommend it. So what exactly, how does this roll? Because this is like a replacement for KDE that requires KDE? No. No? Uh, think of it more at the framework level. It's a replacement for QT or GTK. You still need a desktop environment to run everything, mm -hmm. or you could use it on top of just a window manager, or you could just run it on top of raw X if you're feeling particularly brave. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. And I, I'm guessing, like you were saying, this is the goal of this is to keep things a little bit more sane between your mobile app and what you have on the desktop. Yep. You have one code base to show the same thing, but with different scaling, different transformations, different everything else. So it looks proper. Okay. Pretty mm -hmm. neat. Now, I got a little bit of audacity news. Not really. Not regular audacity news. No, this is tenacity news. It isn't mate before? Uh, oh, it is mate. <laughs> Fine. I think we're going to talk about mate first. So, yeah. yes. Or we can do it after. Version 126, then. Jill. Go on. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, after 18 months of development, the mate 1.26 desktop has a awesomely been released with lots of new features, updated apps, and initial Wayland support on some of the apps, which is really cool. And there are so many updates to Mate. We can't even talk about them all here. You'll, you'll have to go and look at the show notes and uh, read all the info. So the Kaja file manager has been updated. Uh, actually, a couple of major updates. It now supports formatting disk drives from the context menu, which I'm really going to enjoy because I use Mate. In fact, I'm using Mate right now with Ubuntu Mate. So um, I really like that feature and they added a new bookmarks sidebar and there's a whole other lot of features they added. And the other cool thing is the power manager component offers users a new option to enable keyboard dimming. Yay. So you can get a little bit of RGB love, at least keyboard RGB love, and you can, you know, darken or lighten your keyboard as much as you want. And now the display dialog has a new option for display scaling. Yay! I've been waiting Is it for more that. Than 2X now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm hoping. I'm I'm hoping. And uh and what's really cool is Mate 1.26 will probably be included by default in the upcoming Ubuntu Mate 20.10 Impish Indri release. So I'm looking forward to that. I will be upgrading this machine to that. <laughs> you left out the best part, Joe. Oh. Nye, the most important update in the entirety of Mate's history. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the speed calculator. That's what they have. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now with a vastly improved, I wasn't joking, vastly improved yeah. uh, integer factorization speed <laughs> and recent computation history is now available. Um, and they did sort some memory leaks in the screensaver, which worries me because that means somebody still using a screensaver noticed that. <laughs> so someone left their laptop with their uh, screensaver on all night and when they came up in the morning it was hard locked <laughs> it's like a double negative right there man if you want to save power, <laughs> power good luck finding a mic what the only big one that jumped at me was the um, do not disturb mode there's finally a do not disturb mode in the oh, notification yes. app indicator that 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 yeah. that was a long time coming Hmm. And, yeah, uh, you remember Wimpy put one. Yeah, yeah, Wimpy <laughs> put one in a bunch of Monte. So, but it's it's nice to have it now as part of Monte. <laughs> the do not disturb. And the, uh, but does support that just for hyperlinks your, uh, on notifications. Notifications. <laughs> yes. Uh, you can cut them off entirely. Yes, it is still just using um, lib app notifier. I think. Okay. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you could disable them entirely, or you can just put do not disturb mode. So that you only get the really critical ones, like your battery's at seven percent, yo, shutting down. 
<laughs> well, um, back to what I was saying before I was so kindly interrupted. Uh, <laughs> tenacity. They've been doing some work, man. I think tenacity is going to, and you think about that, this is the audacity. This is, seems to be the most popular fork. Then again, it's the fork that they're doing some work. They didn't just do a name change. And one of the big changes that they're working on right now is reworking the CMake system. Not to bore anyone to tears, but this is just something that needed doing. And they're rocking and rolling and getting all of that done. But one thing I really want to bring up is they have a very well laid out building.md. Compared to um, the one you can find for Audacity, this is light years ahead. And it warns you right up front. There will be WX widgets, which is exactly where I tapped out. I didn't even want to mess with it. Deb- Debian, Ubuntu, you know, anything that comes off Debian. They have Fedora build, Arch, yeah. you know what, Alpine, VC package. And of course, you know, if you want to build it on Windows or Mac OS, and all of this is there. <laughs> if you hate yourself that much. <laughs> um, you know, one thing I think I filed a issue with um tenacity is one thing they're building instructions fair warning in case you want to tango with it uh if you're using jack uh, it does have just libjack set up so if you have jack dd jack d2 installed the right jack um it'll revert that so keep that in mind mm-hmm. but you know what's good on them for doing some work to clean up the build system this is not sexy work no i don't have any flashy graphics to show off or screenshots but You'll be thanking them in the long run, especially updating the documentation, and that's going to make it easier for distributions, more enticing anyway, to package it. Um, I I Mm. do believe in the not-so-distant future you will be seeing um, tenacity in place of most Linux distributions instead of Audacity, simply because you don't know what Audacity is up to next time. Yeah. And Mm. I guess this is the popular fork because... The previous maintainer got 4chan, so he decided, you know what, I, I got better things to do. Mm-hmm. So, uh, being, mm-hmm. best of luck to you. Uh, we do need a, like, big, popular uh, fork of Audacity, if for nothing else, to keep them in check. Please, yeah, thank you. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> yeah, and the more progress we have on Tenacity, the better it'll make Audacity, and vice versa. <laughs> mm-hmm. This is true. And I- yeah. And I'm looking forward to the stable binary, you know, so I have that alternative to Audacity. Can't wait. <laughs> I, I do like a forked project, a fresh project, simply because I can come in with some, um, hey, um, these, these are some ideas that I've had that have been completely ignored. So, mm-hmm. but what do I know, right? Uh, <laughs> a common problem if you've ever dealt with any type of audio music production, you've looked at your audio rack and said, man, you know what's missing? Something orange. Well, I have the solution for you with the 11 hack. This is something that's going to let you take advantage <laughs> of the 11 rack. What's an 11 rack? Well, it's a piece of um vintage. Stick with me. Um <laughs> It's a vintage amp modeler from Avid from back in the day. What's back in the day? 2009. That's right. This thing's old. It's ancient, right? Anyway, these were for, they were about 899 pounds back in the day. But in 2021, you can grab one of these for about two, 250-ish US, which isn't bad at all. And um, what can you do with an amp model? Well, you can model amps. That's kind of brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> no one saw that coming, did they? Like, wait, what? <laughs> uh, but it's a really neat piece of hardware. And there's a, surprisingly, it's a Java applet. This guy just reverse engineered. He's like, hey, this is fun. And you can head over to, um, they're called rigs, which are the uh, like different model simulations. You can think of this as a psychotic overpowered distortion pedal, but you can model it to do all types of stuff. And people have. You can go over to 11 Rack Present, hundreds, hundreds of presets people Ooh, have come up with, awesome. and you can come up with your own. So if you've always wanted something orange in your system, I, I had missed this initially <laughs> because I remember going through the Guitar Center um, years, I'm like, what is this orange cabinet looking 
thing and you know you do the research on it and i couldn't find anybody that had taken the time to reverse engineer it because this is a standalone unit it's got a usb hole on the back but that's just a you know load if you want to load anything so yeah if, if you have one or if you know somebody and these things are commonly found new in box because kind of like the inbox that pedro has and jill has they were the cheapest way at the time to get pro tools <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> so people, a lot of people bought these and never bothered taking them out of the box. They're like, oh, yeah, my Pro Tools license. I'm done. There. That's my story. I want everyone to go out and put something orange in your rack or just get some paint. <laughs> Whatever works. Well, for you, you you have something red. It's LWDW Writing Hood. <laughs> I got red. Honestly, I have the one that looks just like the 11 rack gel, but it's white. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> they use the same case as the uh, Digi 003R. They just painted it orange. <laughs> Neat. Evolution of Linux on the desktop is a tale yes. as old as. So, you know, that thing that Linux is not the dominant at at all. Well, um,. Jack Wallen uh, decided to have a look at basically the desktop experience of Linux. And he tells a story about how he started with uh, Caldera Linux 1.0 and Kernel 2.0. We're up to version, I don't know. <laughs> 514 uh, Alpha. Well, 514, 514 or 515? Well, 515, uh, no, 514 is currently in uh, testing RC7. Okay. Seven, right. 514 <laughs> uh, is the the one that's up and coming. So that should give you an idea of how long ago that was. Uh, and yeah, he tells a story about how, you know, it, it, it was ugly. It started out being very, very ugly. And then he started to try... Uh, different things like after step and elementary and he used elementary for a while because everything was elementary did a very good job of being aware of itself and actually presented a unified look with itself other applications well it's 2021 and we all know what gtk and qt are currently doing to one another but it is yeah it is interesting to read this article uh, and see someone say oh yeah uh the new like the current uh desktop uh environments for available for linux are all pretty good and you could basically pick any one of them and just go and make them look amazing and <laughs> On the other hand, I'm remembering back to Ross Cott's GUI video where he was basically just fawning over the good old days of blocky window designs and very square, uh, a, a very square design uh, philosophy uh, all the way through. It's like, oh, interesting, different takes. But yes, I, I, I am glad he brings up GNOME mm -hmm. a lot because GNOME 1.0 was the big one and that's when GNOME started to basically become the uh, sole dominant desktop environment. And in that sense, I'm kind of glad that GNOME 3 happened because that was possibly the best thing that ever happened to um, mm -hmm. the Linux desktop environment. environment. Uh, it effectively killed the domineering position that GNOME was in Are you trying <laughs> and to leveled the playing field. <laughs> you know what? Look, look at the positive side. KDE survived KDE 4. And KDE 5. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and this is uh, so true, Jack. The Linux desktop has come a long way. But me, uh, being a classic Linux user, I still rock Windowmaker, Blackbox, Enlightenment. And I like CDE, too. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's where I came from in the Unix days. So I, I still enjoy using that as well. And I also enjoy the modern productivity takes on the likes of Mate and Pop! OS Cosmic. So I honestly, I like all the desktops. I use them all. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just have everyone know that despite what my colleagues have mentioned, <laughs> the Linux desktop was perfected in 1996. Yeah. With the introduction of a little thing I like to call XFCE. Yeah. 
<laughs> anyway, thank you for attending my TED Talk. I will not be taking questions. Um, oh, we'll talk about XFC a bit more in the pie segment. <laughs> yes. Ben likes Rodentia OS. <laughs> I do too. We were having this discussion earlier this week um, when we were doing um, taking pictures of our desktop, as we do probably once a quarter. <laughs> and, oh, come uh, on. It's a Linux focused Discord. That, that has to happen. Our Discord? <laughs> Like, <laughs> it goes places. Okay, focused is probably too strong of a it's word. Linux and Jason. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, people are running Linux. Mm -hmm. Most of them. Well, half. We have two Windows <laughs> we'll go users. Half. It's not as it's not a scary place for Windows users. We have two. <laughs> um, <laughs> no man. Uh, like the desktop. I don't, um, you, you were, you were having a panic attack because I had colored icons. <laughs> yeah. Look, I posted the screenshot of a heavily, heavily customized, we'll get to that, uh, XFC. Mm -hmm. And, uh, then Ven took a, uh, a screenshot of his and I'm like, oh, wait a second. There's a couple of colored icons. <gasps> nurse, nurse. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because Vents so, are used yeah. to just black and white. <laughs> I empathize with Nori so hard. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what? You'd like me to sleep next to you? No, I just want to kick you. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if she wants to kick. Well, she probably does. Probably Otherwise doesn't she wouldn't. feel the worst for it, now, does she? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> um, no, uh, but to that conversation, I... For better or for worse, I don't spend time staring at my desktop. I don't. Mm -hmm. I'm working on something. I'm doing something. I really don't want to imagine that that, that that's your thing. And then you're just like, ooh, look at my desktop. I'm like, ooh, what are you doing? Desktop. That's it. Yep. Desktop. Look at it. Like, do, do, do. <laughs> Wiggle your windows. <laughs> I was, I, I, listen, I was guilty of that. Come on. Um, <laughs> comp is, when comp is first introduced, that was the thing. Is Oh, it's the desktop yeah. cube. That was a and feature the that you brought, your, you brought your friends over to show off. You're like, watch this. Wiggle, yeah. wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> then you broke the cube out. You're like, oh. I'm like, yeah, look how advanced this is. That's the thing. So, yeah. yeah. I still like wobbly windows. Those are fun. <laughs> Linux has come a long <laughs> way um, interface wise and you know Linux doing the Linux thing I mean there's a couple a couple of different ways to go about it and there's like the camps of everyone as long as desktop doesn't get in my way I want to use it because the, the least amount of time I spend interacting with anything on my computer is the desktop so I'm like yeah I can take it unless uh, unless you put your sidebars on the left side of the screen then, then you're just broken individual <laughs> This was Saturday. I'd tell you something, but mm -hmm. it's not. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh oh, you might have lots of uh, growly Ubuntu users. <laughs> That's all right. They'll never figure out how to use their contact form. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, this, yeah. It doesn't really matter what operating system you're using in that case. No one seems to be able to figure it out. <laughs> so. If you want to contact us, I will tell you about how to do that a little bit later. But we need to thank some new people for supporting this show, letting us do what we do, commercial free, and bring it to you each and every week. Who do we got this week, Joe? We got some awesome people to thank. Yeah. I do believe we do. We do. Yes. We have um, uh, Jim, which is a new patron, who's a new patron, and Nubbin increased his pledge. Thank you, you both. Nubbin's we love monster. you both. <laughs> Nubbin did. Yeah. Nubbin had us confused. Yes. We were in the uh, pre-pre-super shows. And, oh, um, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Saturday. This is a little bonus soda. We throw some extra bonus sodas in for our patrons, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we saw Nubbin's pledge like, oh, Nubbin increased his pledge. Nubbin increased him. Like, <laughs> and then uh, Nubbin changed his pledge to a lower value. It's like, oh. Ah, figured it out. Okay. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think the first one just said increased, and the other one had a number of we could because we couldn't yeah. decipher. We even <laughs> end up in a like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, thank you, Jim. Thank you, Newman. Yeah, that is quite brilliant. Speaking of Patreon, Patreon.com forward slash Learning Schemecast. Come get some awesome things. If you like this show, 
you want maybe an extra hour and a half, two hours of it each and every week in podcast format, also in YouTube video format, ad-free, we got it for you. And uh, something I like to mention, hop in our Discord, do yourself a favor. That is where you get the absolute earliest views of anything that has to go through the production machine at LGC, the uh, video from last night. Jordan and I going through Quake 1 Bath Master 2021, mm. Nightmare Mode, Friendly Fire on, <laughs> featuring Rohit and some other rando that popped in for a minute before we remembered to lock it down correctly. <laughs> and uh, that's out. That's just like, it's done. It's up as soon as YouTube's like, hey, I have it uploaded. I go ahead and drop that in the announcement section in our Discord. Like, that'll probably go up to Patreon. Uh, Maybe this afternoon, maybe tomorrow, but if you want to get the absolute quick look at it, like this show, it'll be up a little bit early, and doubly so on Saturday, because YouTube has decided that it wants to take all day to convert our video (laughs) to VP9, because YouTube's given Mm -hmm. us the VP9 treatment on everything now. So, went from 30 minutes to a couple hours, all right, so we got to keep that in mind, but thanks each and every one of you sharing the show, just doing anything you can. Stick around for your name in the credits. Yeah. Advertising. Yes. (laughs) Shameless self-promotion. We're terrible. Yeah. Look at it. We love our patrons. That didn't work. There we go. Now we go. There. Now it's real. Ah. Aw, there we go. (laughs) So let's get into some RGBP. Yes. Ooh, it, uh, it's blue and purple. It's blue and purple and filled with Very Mac os that one. Which uh, is, uh, you know, fitting because Twister OS uh, is a thing. And I was made aware of this thing by one uh, Christopher Burnett, uh, or Burnett, or however you spell his last name, from Explaining Computers. Uh, he mm-hmm. did a video a couple of weeks ago, and I was catching up on it uh, yesterday or the day before. And, uh, so, oh, Twister OS. Oh, you can change to like it's got, it does the whole make it look like Windows, make it look like Windows 10, XP, uh, make it look like Mac OS. You have both Big Sur and Catalina. I'd I'd be hard pressed to tell the difference between the two. Even after <laughs> even after seeing the two <laughs> side by side, I'd be hard pressed. But yeah, Pretty. it is uh it is an entire operating system by Pi Labs. You can load it onto your Raspberry Pi. Or if you have um, <clears throat> one of the Pine or Rock Chip XP, <laughs> Windows 7. Yeah, Wait if you have Wait one of the... So this thing has like three different flavors of Nope to choose from? Uh, <laughs> keep going. <laughs> XP <laughs> version of ten. <laughs> There we go. 10 dark. Uh, 10 dark, yeah. And 11. <laughs> 11. <laughs> So yeah, it does give you a lot, a lot of options if you want to try like uh, all the different looks to the different um, operating systems. It does a very good job of making your desktop actually look like that. It also changes uh, a couple of other um, applications. It installs, I think it's Chrome. If you're just using the Twister UI script, which you can do if you have even on x86-64, uh, it works out of the box in Ubuntu or Zubuntu or um, Linux Mint XFC or Manjaro 64. But if you have one of those three, you should be able to just go or any um, any Arch based XFC distro or any Ubuntu based XFC distro. It should mm-hmm. work prob- probably, <laughs> maybe. I'm not entirely sure. I didn't try. <laughs> there's, there's nothing like the glowing endorsement of a shrug emoji, Pedro. Good, good job. <laughs> I did. I did Aww. try it on Shubuntu because I did have uh, Shubuntu installed on the um, the Dell Inspiron Duo, the one with the screen that flips around. And I loaded it up on it. That's the screenshot that I put on Discord earlier, and it it really does make XFC very, very shouty very very colorful and yeah it's it it may be your type of thing honestly that's a little too shouty even for me (laughs) 
<laughs> I took the screenshot. It's like, no, that wallpaper needs to go because that's messing with my eyes. <laughs> Come on. Don't you want a little scorched retina? You want to punish your rod cells? No. <laughs> No, no, no. Oh. I'd like to. My eyes are already. Well, one of them is already kind of dubious. Mm-hmm. I'd like to keep, you know, no, at about this level no. for the next few years. Listen, <laughs> you already have one down on a knee, so let's go ahead and take it out and you be a pirate. <laughs> Yar. Right. Uh, Yar. <laughs> well, I was happy about this, Pedro, and thank you for putting it in the show notes because I had heard of Twister. Wh- Twister OS, but didn't know about the Twister UI until you actually mm-hmm. posted it in Discord chat and your pictures. That's really cool. And yes, it harkens back to the days of the GNU Step UI, <laughs> which uh, is an overlay for Window Maker. So that was also one of my favorites. And thank you, Don M, for mentioning that in chat. <laughs> and so, and like a lot of uh, good distros, this is really cool. Lutris is installed by default. And you can run it on your Pi via the 86, x86 emulator box 86. That is pre-installed. And it also includes Commander Pi for easy overclocking of your single board computer. You know, this is if you want to run, run the ISO on your Pi, of course. Mm-hmm. And I actually um, just just installed uh, Twister OS on my Raspberry Pi 400 yesterday. And am enjoying it tremendously. Hmm. <laughs> I I mean, I, I I do have some questions. First of all, that's XFC. What you done to my boy? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Can barely look at him. <laughs> Another thing I was looking through, like you know, some of the stuff that's installed, and naturally I went right to the gaming stuff. Box eighty six, I completely get that. But flying spaghetti, spaghetti monster, help me if I can understand the logic of installing Lutras on a pie. Um, oh, but it's going to be so fun to test and make a game. That's the thing. Lutris doesn't just do wine. It also does yeah. uh, native engine re-implementations like your open MWs, your scum VMs, your everything else. So if you just want to have the one client that handles all of that, that's what Lutris is there for. And how many you people, click install. How, how many people, the first thing they're going to do is try to install Steam. That's why oh, yeah. Box 86 is there. <laughs> yeah. And it works quite well. I got Portal running. That's why Box 86 is there. That's, a, yeah. that, that's literally it. I've seen Portal running on a Pi. We have different definitions yeah. of well. Uh, also, they do Well, have, on the Pi 400. Uh, on the Pi 400, it, it runs works. nicely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> On your quad core pie, it, oh, don't waste your time. Is what I'm telling you, people. <laughs> <laughs> so they also sell cases, correct, Pedro? They do. They have these cutesy little cases. They have one that's uh, specific for Twister OS. It's that uh, shouty blue one <laughs> with the Twister logo on the side. Um, they're not cheap cases, but they're very, very well done acrylic uh, Raspberry Pi cases. So if you want um, something to hold your Raspberry Pi and you'd like to support the artist and Twister OS, by all means, uh, give it a look. It is Those are yeah, actually those are very beautiful. good looking cases. It's, so I'm yeah. looking at the web zone I right like now. the translucent, <laughs> translucent ones because you can put a light in there and, and RGB and make it glow. <laughs> <laughs> More shouting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we're seeing the Etsy store. There'll be a link to the Etsy store in the show notes because Pedro will add it to the show notes before I copy it over. Um, the I, I'm looking at Etsy. What do you think this is really? Is there any chance that there's only one available and it's currently in a person's shopping cart? Or do you think uh, that? Do you, uh, do you think if I looked over that source code, that's going to be a function I'm going to find? To, um, <laughs> probably. probably. But the uh, <laughs> that uh, particular warning on the shouty orange case has been there since I put this in the show notes on Monday. Uh, so I wonder if that's something you can set on your Etsy shop. Right as in, let us know. Like that would be It's a good like, idea. oh, oh, look at this. It's premium. People want it. Uh-huh. Come on. <laughs> good to know. Good to know. But we got an AIO CM4156 and you were thinking to yourself just yesterday, man, I wish I had one of those. <laughs> Cause I'm telling you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> The industrial all-in-one PC. Is that what it is? 
It, yes. It, it, yeah, it is a touch screen uh, with a compute module for that's completely self-contained. They do say it's like the mouse and the keyboard are not included. All you get is the screen, like the casing, the touch screen, the little bridge for the, uh, the hat. And uh, that's it. But it is a touch screen. So, and, you know, considering the price, it, it does come with the um, compute module, mm-hmm. the two gigabyte version of the compute module four, which is pretty good. And yeah, it is. It's an AIO Pi. And theoretically, I mean, like, yeah. theoretically, you <laughs> will be able to uh, install a new uh, compute module in it into the future. How big is the screen, Pedro? It is not very big. I don't remember the exact size. They have it down here somewhere. I thought it was 14. Uh, uh, or 15.6, I think. Okay. Uh, 15.6 1920 by yes, 1080 15. so you know what that's yes. not a bad resolution for the size it does have the touches on it though right there is a, it is an option the base model doesn't have touch but how, how uh, much the, for the touch how much i gotta pay to touch it uh, i don't even see that touch 60 screen. 60 bucks yeah. all right all right <laughs> that's not bad i could see so this it, being it basically a, uh, brings it up to 400 dollars it's gonna sound <laughs> pricey but if you're thinking about building a kiosk for like a booth or something like that. So like a show you were doing. So I'm, XFC's got a wonderful kiosk mode, by the way, because I've been stuck in that horrible little thing a couple of times. Mm. Be careful. <laughs> um, How do I undo? <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a Google search and a little bit of a journey before you unlock that one. Um, but as a point yeah. of sale system, that could also Perfect. be viable. And you have the options mm-hmm. of uh, pre-installed Debian 10 or Android OS. So that's another thing you might not even been thinking about. Like, wait a minute. Yeah, that's right. I can put Android on Pi. Touch. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, you know, this is actually kind of a game changer because you know, I've been waiting for to see this, to see the Raspberry Pi and the full computer in an all-in-one with, in a monitor. Because it makes sense for industrial and, and point-of-sale usages. And, um, you know, we have Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi 400, which is in a keyboard. Why not a monitor? So I, I've, I'm i actually surprised it's taken <laughs> this long. Well, Jill, if you give me <laughs> a little bit of duct tape, I can put that <laughs> keyboard on a monitor. Yeah. You make it an AIO. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> a lot of people have done mods where they've put the, the Raspberry Pi in a monitor. So it, it, it makes sense that now a company is doing it and now they can reap the benefits mm. By being, you know, much cheaper than most POS systems and industrial systems. This is contained too. It's the one thing you just buy it. That's the biggest selling point of this. They ship you the whole thing. You don't mess around with it. You just got to put something on it Mm -hmm. and you're done. It's kind of brilliant. But speaking of done, that's going to do it for this week's episode of Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays. (laughs) We'd always love to hear from you. Head over to our contact form, linuxgamecast.com forward slash. uh, Just hit the contact button there. You'll find it. Leave us a comment on YouTube or on Patreon post, and you can always just at reply Pedro because he loves the attention. <laughs> yes. I enjoy the attention. Love's a strong word. <laughs> Too much attention and I'm gone. <laughs> he will invite you over to his house for a kick. No. Oh, no. I'd give him a hug. <laughs> That's you do you can have way. the hug, Jill, but the one. Is that... <laughs> yeah, just one. <laughs> and uh, duct tape, why not hot glue? Game Matron, zip ties. <laughs> or as yeah. that one person said, tweezers. Aw, <laughs> Omega Sun, our Theron, our advisors. Thank you so much. And our beautiful executive producers. And our new uh, Chicago. Kicks. Kicks a lot <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and our our sea monsters. Now Nubbin is on that list. <laughs> yes. I don't know what's wrong with Katie and Live, but I like the effect, so I didn't. <laughs> yeah, oh, I see that, that it, wasn't uh, intentional. The color cycle. Okay. No, it wasn't. Well, it is now. <laughs> <laughs> it's color cycling. Because <laughs> I noticed that it was like really in my eyes. Yeah, what? <laughs> I, I was like, "Why are you doing that?" I, was like, I, I kind of don't mind that. Hey. <laughs> We'll see you next week, everyone. (laughs) Bye, Bye, everyone.